Hello all, welcome to this video where we will be discussing density-based clustering method. Uh, in our earlier video, we have uh, dealt with partitioning-based clustering method, which was k-means clustering, and agglomerative clustering method, which was hierarchical method plus of clustering. In this uh, video, we will be dealing with density-based clustering method, where we will be looking at one numerical example on DB scan method. Now, partitioning-based method and hierarchical methods are generally designed to find spherical shape cluster. But if the cluster has got some arbitrary shape, say for example, S shape or oval shape, then density-based clustering method could be used to identify the cluster. We have referred to this particular book for DB scan method. So the problem here is to find out the dense region. So we will be finding out density of any object or any sample point O by finding out how many more sample points are near to this object or near to this sample point O. So O will be identified as a core object if it has got more number of neighbors around it. Okay. So there are two important terms that we need to know before we delve into the problem. The first term is epsilon. Epsilon is the radius which will define the neighborhood of sample point or object O. So that will be our epsilon. And min points, that is how many number of objects are there in the vicinity of radius epsilon surrounding object O. That is the min's point that we will be defining. These are the user defined parameters, okay? So epsilon is the radius which we using which we will define the neighborhood of object O and within that radius of epsilon, how many minimum points of neighbors should be there? That is min's point, okay? So any object will be classified as core object if it has got at least min's point number of object in the radius of epsilon, okay? That is definition of a core object. Now, let us uh, know few more terms. So one term is core object, which we have already understood. That is also called as core point. Then there are boundary points, and then we have outliers or noise points, okay? So first of all, uh, what is core point? We have already discussed. If any, if an object O has got at least min points number of object within the radius of epsilon, then it is called as a core point, okay? Then there is another point, which is boundary point. So if a point is direct density reachable point from core point O, then it is called as boundary point. But I will tell you this in detail when we look up at the example. And then there is outlier or noise. So this point is neither a core point nor a boundary point. If it is not classified as a core point or a boundary point, it is called as noise. Okay. So let us say epsilon is our radius and we have taken our min's point as three. That means there should be at least three objects or three points in that vicinity of epsilon, okay, including object O. So say we are taking this as our point under consideration and epsilon is the radius that we have taken and we are drawing a circle around this point with radius epsilon, okay. And now let us count, we have taken min's point as three. So this point will be considered as a core point if including this point, there are at least three objects in this radius. And if we count the number of objects, there are how many objects here? We have got one, two, three, and four objects in this radius, okay? So here, this point under consideration will be considered as a core point. Okay. Now about the boundary point, whether this point will be a boundary point or not. Yes, this point will be a boundary point. The reason is it is direct density reachable point. Direct density reachable point means it is in the neighborhood of, uh, of this core point with radius epsilon. 
So within this radius, this point is there. So it is direct density reachable point and it is called as a boundary point. Now let us take another example. Let this be the point answer under consideration and we are drawing a circle uh, of radius epsilon here around this particular point under consideration. But do we have do we have enough number of uh, objects within this radius? No, we don't have enough number of objects. So it is not a core point. Can it be considered as a boundary point? No, it cannot be considered as a boundary point because it is, if we consider this yellow point as our core point, then it is not in uh, the vicinity of this particular core point at the radius of epsilon. So it cannot be considered as a boundary point. But there could be other points which could become core points and then it could be in the vicinity of uh, radius epsilon that could be seen later on. But with respect to this point, it is not in the vicinity of uh, radius epsilon. Okay, so now steps in DB scan algorithm. What we will do is uh, we will first identify or we will classify the points as core point and noise points. So core points, for core point classification, we have already seen two conditions. First condition is epsilon and second condition is uh, mince point. So we will, using these two conditions, epsilon and mince point, we will identify whether the particular point is a core point or not. If the, core, if the point is not core point, then it will be marked as a noise point. So that is the first step we will do. And within this first step, we will be going through these steps here. We will look at these steps with the help of one example. The second step would be that we will check whether the noise point can become a boundary point or not. Okay, that will be our second point. So if the noise point is directly density reachable, that is if it is within the boundary of radius epsilon from the core point, then we will mark that noise point as boundary point. And if it is not within the boundary of radius epsilon from the core point, then it will be left as a core point, noise point. It will be left as a noise point only. Okay. So let us take this example. Uh, we have got eight samples. And for these eight samples, these are the coordinates. Okay. These are your X. You can say this is your X coordinate and Y coordinate. These are the coordinates. And we have plotted these samples here. Okay. Uh, we are going to take epsilon as 3.5 and we have taken mince point as 3. And here also to find out the distance between the points, okay, how will you know whether it is within the radius of 3.5 or not? Uh, we will be using Euclidean distance formula, okay? And once again, what is Euclidean distance formula? We have seen Euclidean distance formula in the earlier video, but this is the Euclidean distance formula. If we have to find out the distance between S1 and S2, then distance between S1 and S2 will be given by Euclidean distance formula is this, uh, pi minus eight, the whole square, plus seven minus four, the whole square. This is the Euclidean distance formula. So this will be equal to root of nine plus, nine which is equal to root of 18 okay and we can find out what root of 18 is so this euclidean distance formula we will be using okay so here we have created this distance matrix uh we are finding the distance between each sample points so distance between s1 and s1 it will be zero distance between s1 and s2 we have just found out so that will be 4.24 and so on. So we will be finding distance between all amongst all the sample points. So this is the distance matrix, right? Now, let us see if uh, a particular sample point, say for example, we have a, the point under consideration is S1. So within the vicinity or within the radius of epsilon 3.5, how many sample points do we have which are within this radius? from S1. So we can see uh, 3.5 is our epsilon. So S4 will be there in that radius. S5 will be there in that radius. S6 will be there in that radius. And S8 will be there in that radius of 3.5 from S1. Okay. So 
if S1 is the point under consideration, then S4, S5, S6, and S8 qualify as its neighbors, which are within the radius of 3.5 epsilon. Okay. Similarly, we find out the neighbor of S2. We find the neighbor of S3. So let us take example of S2. How many points are there in the vicinity of radius 3.5 from S2? We just have this one point S8, which is in the vicinity of radius 3.5 from S2. So we have taken S8 as the neighbor of S2 and so on. We have taken all the neighbor. We have considered each and every sample point and we have found out the neighbors of each and every sample point here. Okay, so that was the first step. Now, here, whether S1 is a core point or not, this decision will be made based on our min's point. So we have got four neighbors in the vicinity of S1, vicinity of epsilon radius from S1. Okay, there are four neighbors. In, and including S1, we have got five sample points in that radius, in that circle. So S1 will be qualified or can be considered as a core point because the number of sample points in that circle is more than our min's point. It is more than three. So we can qualify S1 as core point. So it is marked in red. What about S2? Now, within the vicinity of radius 3.5 of S2, we just have two points in that circle, S2 itself and S8. This number two, it is less than means point three, which we have considered in this example. So S2 will not qualify as a core point. S3, can it qualify as core point? Yes, S3 can qualify as core point. The reason is including S3, there are three sample points within that radius. So S3 can qualify as a core point. S4, S5, S6, and S8 also similarly can, be, can qualify as core points. And we will mark S2 and S7 as noise points. Okay. So as we have seen in the earlier slide, S1, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S8 are marked as core points. S2 and S7, they are marked as noise points. Now let us see whether S2 and S7 can qualify as boundary point or not. Let us check for them individually. So first let us look at S2, okay? S2, is it in the vicinity of 3.5 radius, 3.5 epsilon from any of the core points? Is it in the vicinity of radius 3.5 from any of the core points? Uh, if we check, it is not in the vicinity of S1, it is not in the vicinity of S5, it is not in the vicinity of S6, it is not in the vicinity of S3, not in the vicinity of uh, S4, which is a core point, but it is in the vicinity of S8, okay? It is in the vicinity of S8 within that radius of 3.5. So S2 will, earlier we had marked it as a noise point, but it can qualify as a boundary point because it is direct density reachable point. That means it is within the vicinity of radius 3.5 from the core point. So it is the boundary point. It can classify or it can qualify as a boundary point. Okay. Now what about S7? If we see S point, it is not in the vicinity of core point S1, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S8. So S7 is not in the vicinity of radius 3.5 from any of the core points, and hence it is not direct density reachable, and hence this noise point S7 cannot be considered as a boundary point. Okay. So this was the example of uh, BB scan algorithm. Thank you very much for listening.